Hey everybody, it's Ryan from Pick Dogs, and this is Ryan's Big Shot Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games for Saturday, February 17th, 2024. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my college basketball bank shop best bet, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Saturday's loaded card in college hoops. First up, it's an early game between Texas Tech and Iowa State. This one, 12 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. At Texas Tech, the Red Raiders coming off a big win over their rivals in the last game against Kansas, 79-50, the final score, a blowout win over Kansas. And we know the Jayhawks, you know, they've been one of the better teams in the country in the last decade plus, two decades plus. And, you know, they're the big, they're the team to beat in the Big 12 year after year. And Texas Tech, you know, 29-point win. I know Kansas was missing a few key players, and that certainly showed up in that game. But still an impressive victory nonetheless. But Texas Tech now on the road in this game. This could be, be considered a letdown spot after, you know, beating your rivals. And the Red Raiders have just not been that great on the road, at least as of late. They've lost three of their last four uh, true road games straight up. They lost to Houston. Baylor and TCU. And I think Iowa State should be in that conversation as some of the better teams in the Big 12. They've they've you know deserved it. 19 of 5 record, 8 and 3 in conference play. They're a team we've talked a lot about here on the Bank Shop Breakdown and a team I'm looking for in terms of a contender in the NCAA tournament. I mean, last year, we, we know Iowa State as a program has been really strong defensively in recent years. Last year, they were top 10 in adjusted defensive efficiency. Same thing the year before. But this season, they've made, you know, last year they were weak offensively. They turned the ball over too much. They weren't a great shooting team. This season, they really made improvements on the offensive side of the game. They take care of the basketball. They're a really strong offensive rebounding team. They get to the free throw line, and they're top 100 in three-point and two-point field goal percentage. So big improvements there. Still the same potent defense. Number one in uh, forcing turnovers, 26.3% of their defensive possessions end in a turnover uh, for their opponents. That's a really, really you know sharp number to look at. T uh, number three in adjusted defensive efficiency. They force tough shots. They're on a three-game win streak. They've won six of their last seven. I got to go with Iowa State in this matchup at home. They've been really strong at home as well. I'm going to take them and lay the points. Next up, we see another early game between Creighton and Butler. This one's going to be 1230 Eastern on Fox. Now, Creighton playing with revenge in this game. These two teams played not too long ago. Back on February 2nd, it was a one-point win, 99-98. Final score, really exciting, you know, high-scoring battle in that one. It was a game where Butler was, was without Posh Alexander, but they were able to cash in on 13 of 22 from three, 59% from the perimeter. Creighton only 9 of 25, 36%. Not too bad, but Butler went crazy from the perimeter. Yet they still only won that game by one point. That's a concern for me. When I see that, when you, when you put together, you know, 13 to 22 from three, I want you to win a game by, you know, 10 plus points. When you only win by one, even on the road, I, I do get a little worried because Creighton still put up 98 points in that game. They were 68% from two-point range. They had 24 free throw attempts. They had 11 more free throw attempts than Butler did in that game. They had four more offensive rebounds. Creighton played fundamentally sound basketball. It just came down to Butler, like I said, had an amazing shooting performance, but I still think Creighton is one of the better teams, not just in this conference, but in the country. They're experienced. We know what they did in the NCAA tournament last year. They're a balanced team, top 30 in both adjusted offensive and defensive efficiency. That's exactly what you're looking for when you're trying to pick a dark horse in the NCAA tournament. And I think that they get that revenge in this spot. Butler, a tough place to play. And I think they played a lot better in conference play than a lot of people expected, especially after their start. They were 2-5 and five in conference play at one point. But here they are back at 500 at 7-7. Seven and seven. But in their last uh, three games, they've lost to some of the better teams in this conference, UConn and Marquette, uh, most recently against Marquette at home. I think Creighton wins in a very similar game to that Marquette game. I'm going to take Creighton here at a pretty solid price on the road. Next up, we see Texas and Houston. This one, 1 p.m. Eastern on CBS. This is another second matchup of the season series as these teams played on January 29th. It was an overtime game, 76-72. The Longhorns competed in that ball game. They were able to cover the number and you know play with one of the best teams in the country for more than 40 minutes. But in this in this second meeting, you know Houston has just been so strong at home. We talk a lot about home court advantage and conferences like the Big 12 and how it matters. But for Houston, it really really matters because this is a team that has three losses overall this season, but all three of those were true three uh, three true road games: Iowa State, TCU, and Kansas. At home, Houston has won every single game, of course, but they've also won every single home game by double digits, and that includes conference games. They won by 16 most recently at home against Oklahoma State, by 22 against Kansas State, by 15 against UCF, 23 against Texas Tech, 
uh, 34 against West Virginia. And then, of course, in non-conference play, we saw some really lopsided scores, scores like 84-31 to 31 and 82-50. to 50. So t- Houston has just been so strong on their home court. And we know this team is already you know, one of the best teams in college basketball. And this season especially, you know, they do a really good job of taking care of the basketball. We know the offenses for Houston haven't always been the most potent. The defense is really where we see Kelvin Sampson teams thrive. But their offense, while they're not shooting the ball too well, they're still doing the fundamentals really well. Their offensive rebounding is top five in college basketball. Like I said, they take care of the basketball. And I, I do think their shooting numbers are going to improve as the season continues because they're creating pretty good looks. And they're already top 20 in adjusted offensive efficiency. To me, I've mentioned a lot, a lot of, you know, a few times this year. I think the Longhorns are an overrated team. I give them credit for competing in that first matchup, but now on the road against Houston, I, I can't get there with them. Give me Houston here by probably 15 plus. Next up, we see Utah State and Colorado State. This one's going to be 5:30 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Now, Utah State playing pretty good basketball as of late. They've won five of seven, including their last two games against Boise State and Wyoming. Most recently on the road at Wyoming. Wasn't the most impressive win. It was only an eight-point win. They gave up 76 points against a team, I would say, one of the weaker teams in this conference, but a win nonetheless. But you know, while Utah State's had a you know, good amount of wins on the road this year, they're only 2-5-2 two, and two against the spread. So they've not been profitable on the road. And we've talked about how profitable home teams have been in this conference in particular. You know, there's a few conferences like that, but the Mountain West, especially, the home teams have just been so strong against the spread. I had a look at the numbers, and you know, there's a good amount of teams in this conference, but only three teams in the entire Mountain West are not profitable at home against the spread this season. And those teams, you could probably guess, are some of the weaker teams in this conference. San Jose State, Wyoming, and Air Force. Two of the three, I would say, don't really have great home court advantages. Wyoming does, but this is a down year, so it's not as exciting for this program. And it doesn't surprise me to see those teams struggling against the number, but teams like Colorado State, San Diego State, New Mexico, Utah State, all profitable at home against the spread. I mean, uh, Colorado State is 7-5 and five against the number, so you know, not a crazy, amazing record, but still, you're winning money backing these teams at home and fading some of these teams on the road. Like I said, Utah State, 2-5-2 two, and two against the number on the road this season. Let's see, Colorado State this year on the road is 3-5. and five. So, uh, you know, only actually, it looks like only two teams in the entire Mountain West are profitable on the road. It makes sense. These teams play against each other, you know, quite a few of these games uh, in, in conference play. So, to me, Colorado State playing at home, playing with revenge, playing in pretty good form. Yeah, they lost their last game against San Diego State, but they had won four previous ones against San Diego State at home, Boise State, and San Jose State covering a lot of those games. I think Colorado State and Utah State pretty even teams, but I just think situationally, got to take the home team, the Mountain West. Give me the Colorado State Rams. I'm going to lay the points. And finally, we see an SEC game between Kentucky and Ole Miss. This one's going to be 6 o'clock Eastern. It's going to be on ESPN, probably one of the better games on the board for the Saturday card. Now, I've mentioned quite a few times this season, and at the beginning of the year, it wasn't the most popular opinion, but now in recent form, you know, people are starting to turn it around. Then I think Kentucky is one of the more overrated teams in college basketball. And, you know, at the beginning of the year, they were hitting their shots. They're tough, low percentage shots, making them at a good rate, and they were winning ball games. But now, as of late... We're starting to see the Wildcats come down to earth. We're starting to see how you know this young team is not able to you know run the gauntlet in a conference like the SEC. And Kentucky now has four losses in conference play. You know, to me, I still think Kentucky's a very good team, but Auburn at home is really tough to beat. We saw that with South Carolina last game, a 101 to 61 you know beatdown for the Tigers. They just couldn't miss in that one. I mean, you're not going to see shooting performances like that, you know, too often from teams. I mean, Auburn was 12 of 20 from three-point range, 60%. They were 24 of 39 from two, 62%. Yeah, you know, I don't think that's going to be the case, you know, very often, but against a weak Kentucky defense, I do think that Auburn's going to have a good day offensively, that's for sure. This is a fast-paced, potent offense. They're fundamentally sound. They play so much better at home. And like I said, Kentucky just relies way too much on those low percentage threes. Like I said, there's a lot of talent on this team. Kentucky's going to have, you know, they have plenty of guys. Uh, Dillingham, Reeves, both above 40% from three on the season. They're going to make some tough shots. But for 40 minutes against a tough defense in a tough environment, I, I can't get there with Kentucky here. I just think Auburn, the better team here, going to go with the Tigers and lay the points at home. I think they win this one pretty comfortably. And that's it. Those are the games for Saturday in college basketball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and put your college basketball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium, and there's a link in the description. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.